Okay, so my name is Daniel Thompson from the Wasp OS project and I'm back at you with another video showing you all the changes that we've made over the last month or so, uh, in particular landing new applications. Uh, so this is the first application I would like to show you right off the bat. This is the new analog clock application which comes from myself. Uh, it's very very simple, um, you know, uh, 12 hour traditional analog clock. Uh, I'm actually going to reboot again to get rid of it um, because I'd like to show you a really empty machine because we've changed the default set of apps on the machine now. Um, so by default, uh, the only apps you're going to see if you try fire up the launcher are the settings app and the software app. Uh, and this is there to save RAM. So a problem we've had in Mossboss is that if we turn on all the applications, um, there's not enough free RAM for you to write your own applications. And writing your own applications is absolutely the essence of what Wasposs is all about. Uh, so we want to have lots of space for users to write their own applications. Uh, and just to give you a sense of what that means is I've just turned on a single application there with the software application that I'll show you in a minute, um, which brings in the self-test and in the self-test I can pull in the memory uh, test which will show us how much free RAM there is at various points in time. And you can see here that it takes it's about 12.5k left and some of that RAM will have been used up by the test app that I just enabled. Um, so if I go back to the software and enable all the software at this point. So software is basically just a an, an, uh, simple application that allows you to use these checkboxes, which are another new feature of WaspBoss, the checkbox widget, to turn on additional applications. And when we turn them on, they start consuming RAM. But before they're turned on, they're essentially free. They don't cost us any RAM at all. Which means we can now ship a watch that is capable of running lots of applications and a watch that can be used for development all in the same unit and without having to make any specific customization. So you can see we've got lots and lots of apps enabled in the launcher now. So first off, I'm gonna show you a um, alarm application which was contributed by a pseudonymous user called Siroj42. Um, and this allows us to set an alarm that goes off at some time in the future. So I'm gonna set this to go off at quarter past four. I'll check the tick box. And then when I exit, that will arm the alarm. And so at some point in the demo shortly, we'll see the alarm come in and interrupt our, our flow. Um, so next off, I'd like to show you the Calculate application by um, Jonas Wach. Um, so this is a fairly simple calculator, although when I say simple, it does have some nice properties, like I can do one plus two times three, which if you type it into a really simple calculator will evaluate to nine because it gets the precedence of the multiply and the equals um, and the plus operators wrong. But on this application, it will correctly give us the answer seven um, because we multiply first uh, and then we do the addition. Um, so, so like I say, it's a, it's a nice little atlas. Um, it's following the system color themes now. So it's got this blue theme, which is our default, uh, just as you've seen before in the settings application uh, where we've got uh, sliders that are basically blue. That same blue is being inherited by the calculator to give us the colors. Um, so you've seen the um, analog clock application, um, which is from me. And the next one is another application from uh, Jonas Wach which is the Fibonacci clock, which is a delightfully geeky uh, little um, clock where you can calculate the time by the combinations of colors and area of the colored blocks. So this is telling us that it's approximately 10 minutes past four at the moment, um, based on the edge size of the blocks and adding them together. So the, uh, the green is giving us the minutes at the moment. Uh, that's got two on the edge. We multiply that by five and it gives us 10. Um, and then we've got a one and a three, which we add together to get four. So that's telling us it's 10 past four. Um, it's only accurate to the nearest five minutes, uh, which is good. Um, and you then have to, to, to work from there to calculate the time. Um, so that's just a, a fun, fun, fun way to read the time, if you like. Um, you've seen before the Game of Life. Uh, the Game of Life has never been included by default. You've not been able to enable it with the GUI by default. Uh, so what we have now is that capacity to turn on the game of life, which is particularly memory hungry. Um, and we can label that by default, uh, or at least we can leave it disabled by default, but we have a GUI route to enable it. Um, we also have a music player by um, uh, Carlos Gill. This I can't show in its full form at the moment because I'm using my phone for something else, uh, and therefore I can't actually start music playing, but it shows you the name of the artist and the track 
we can play and we can pause that sending messages to a companion application such as Gadget Bridge and swipes will control things like volume and at this point we get the interruption, our alarm's gone off so we've got this alarm vibrating at us to tell us we've got uh, a message uh, we click it, we go to the arm app, we can disarm the alarm uh, and leave. Uh, so if I go back to the, um, the music application we're looking at, um, swipes will give us uh, track advance and volume control. So we can control media playback with the watch. We can have our phone in our pocket, our headphones on, and we can use our watch while we're walking around to change the track. Um, we've got another application from um, from uh, Jonas Wach, um, which is going to give us um, uh, which was a snake game. So this one is a classic snake game where we can run around eating the food. Uh, the thing gets longer and it will calculate the high score. I'm not going to play this very long, um, partly because I don't want you to recognise how rubbish I am at it, um, but also just so that it ends. And it shows us our high score there, that says we've got a high score of four, and we could play the game again or we could go back to the, uh, the menus. Oh, it's the torch you've all seen before. Uh, it's just a white screen, so I shan't show you that. But what I will show you the self-test going back to the free memory. After we have been initializing all these applications, we've gone from 12k of free RAM to 6k of free RAM. 6k is really, really tight for doing development. It's difficult to actually upload the source code and compile it on the watch. Um, so that's why we have this, this nice hybrid to the software application. The last feature I'd like to show you today is the, um, the theming system. Um, in fact, I'll show you a couple of things we can do with main.py. So all these um, main.pys, what's happening at the moment, I'm just running on my private computer, it connects over Bluetooth and it updates the, um, the main.py. And main.py allows us to customise the watch in a variety of ways. Um, so this particular update has changed the theme. So theming was done by a developer called Kosova One. And he added uh, a collection of um, uh, theming options. So his original plan was he would like the Bluetooth notification icon to be blue. And I said that wasn't acceptable to the defaults, but we could add a theming engine to sort it out. So at the moment I'm running a strong orange theme. Um, so all the themable parts of the main applications have been orange tinted. Um, there is actually, might be hard to see on the camera, but this um, centre time is actually orange tinted, but lighter orange than the other oranges. Um, and we can get our split times and they are orange. We can move to the, um, sorry, wrong way. We can move to the step counter. The status bar is marked up in orange. This zero and step, if I shook it, we could get steps. Uh, that's also um, orange. The launcher has become orange. And the built-in applications um, are also themed in orange. Um, so we have that capacity to get all these excellent colourful themes uh, involved, which you can use for subtle modifications like the Bluetooth logo, or you can use to have a bright green watch if you so wish. Um, I'm going to throw up another um, different main.py. So main.py, no, that's the wrong one, sorry. Um, main.py runs when you boot. Um, and it allows you to change what the watch does during its initialization. So these example files are all going to be checked in the documentation directory. Um, this one is much more subtle than the others. It leaves the watch looking exactly the same, but that is software enabled by default. So the torch and the life application have been automatically enabled in the main.py. Um, we can reach in, we can see them in the checkboxes, the checkboxes are set, we can get rid of them again, but they will still cost us a certain amount of RAM. Um, because importing the module costs a certain amount of RAM that cannot be reclaimed without a reboot. So that's what we can do. And then the final thing I want to show you with main.py is the uh, automatic starting of the analog clock. So we can reach in to the system and change the default clock from digital to analog. And I have to admit, through the winter I've been running this clock because it's quite attractive. I have a suspicion that in strong direct sunlight, the digital clock will be more usable because the numbers are bigger. So the, the difficulty of reading this in strong sunlight, I've not really tested yet. Um, but those are all the features I wanted to show you. And thank you very much to all the contributors, which were Siraj42, uh, Jonas Wach, uh, Carlos Gill, uh, and Kosovo One. Uh, I apologize for mispronunciations, by the way. I didn't want to uh, 
I didn't want to type them in, I wanted to have a go at saying them, so I hope people who have seen me mangle their names at least appreciate me having a go. Um, so yeah, thank, thanks to all of those people for their contributions, it's extremely welcome. Um, and I will be back again at some point in the future with more Wasp Boss videos. Thank you very much for joining me.